So far, we've looked at Poisson regression modeling for counts. Now we're going to talk about Poisson regression models for rates. And we said this happens when the follow-up time or the exposure time differs um, for individuals or for groups. Right? So that is quite often the case um, <clears throat> that in the previous example, if we were looking at the number of visits to a physician, we might have followed some people for six months, some people for three years, and so on. So we can't just compare the number of visits. We need to look at the rate, the number of visits per unit time. Here are the example data set we've been working with in this course is the British doctor's data, where we're looking at the number of deaths from lung cancer divided by the person year's exposure in each of the groups. Right, so we've aggregated data into um, groups based on smoking, yes or no, in age categories. And within each of those groups, we look at the lung cancer death rate, which is the number of deaths divided by the person year's exposure. So the model in concept is going to be the exact same as it was for counts. Rather than modeling the count, we're going to be modeling the rate. So we can think of it conceptually that we're modeling the rate as an exponential function of the x's, or the log rate as a linear function of the x's. Okay, so conceptually, this model is exactly the same as it was for counts. There's going to be a slight difference in how it gets um, implemented in software or the mathematics of it. We're going to need to include something called an offset. And I'll, I'm going to go over an explanation of what that is and, and how it works um, in a moment here. So the example I kind of wanted to give you just to, to motivate this discussion was suppose we had two lung cancer deaths and 10 person years exposure. I'm just doing numbers that are simple to work with in our head. Or suppose in a different group we had 20 lung cancer deaths and 100 person years exposure. Or another one, 200 deaths and 1,000 person years exposure. And now what I'm trying to do with this is what I'm trying to do with this example is <clears throat> show you that in some sense these are all the same rate, or they are the same rate, right? But they're also not the same. Right? If we were just thinking conceptually, which one do you think you'd have more confidence in? If you were estimating the rate two deaths based on ten person years, or two hundred deaths based on a thousand person years. Right? This one we're gonna have a little bit more confidence in, right? It's based on more data, more deaths, more person years exposure. Uh, but the main point is that while these rates are all the same, they're not exactly um, the same. The rates are the same, the information contained in them is not the same. So when we're modeling the rate, what we do not want to do is just model the rate and treat all these three as being the same, right? Having the exact same rate. So essentially what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to when giving the rates, we're going to need to give both the numerator and the denominator of the rate. Okay, and the way that's going to be done, um, well, I'll show you the, the mathematics of it in a second, but we're going to be looking at the count, and we're going to adjust, okay, or use an offset of the um, denominator in the rate. So let me just show you some of the math of, of getting to um, exactly what the offset is, or how we're going to incorporate that. So the key component is that, say, while we want to model the rate in concept, we want to model it in a way that acknowledges these are different, right? When giving it the rate, we give it the numerator and the denominator. So what I'm going to write here is first that the log rate, we can write as the log of y over t, right? y over t being the rate, the number of occurrences per unit time. And that is B0 plus B1 x1 all the way up to BK xk. Okay, so I've just rewritten this so far, <clears throat> but written in what the rate is. Now if you remember from some of the properties of logs that we've been working with in the course, the log of y over t can be written as the log of y minus the log of t b naught plus b1 x1 all the way up to bk xk. Now, what I'm going to do is just bring this over to the other side. 
the log of y is b0 plus b1x1 all the way up to bk xk plus the log of t. Okay, what I'm going to do is just rewrite this, replacing y with the word count, just to make it a bit more familiar with when we looked at Poisson regression models for count data. The log count, and the log number of occurrences, is a function of b0 plus b1x1 all the way up to bk, xk, plus the log of time. Okay, so we've said that in concept, we can think of the model we're fitting is modeling the rate as an exponential function of x's or the log rate as a linear function of x's. In software, here are the mathematics behind what we're doing is we're gonna actually be modeling the log count, right, the log number of times the event occurred as a linear function of x's and including this, right, the log exposure, so including the denominator of the rate, is what gets called an offset. Okay. The way that I um, thought about that first when I learned this stuff was I thought, well, we want to model the log number of times the event occurs as a linear function of x's, right, like we did with counts. <clears throat> but if everyone has different follow-up times, we need to adjust for that, right? We need to adjust for the different follow-up times everyone has. And you can notice that what this is doing is it's forcing the coefficient for that to be one, right? Because we don't want the effect of the follow-up time to be more than what it is or less than what it is. We want it to adjust for the exact amount of follow-up time there was. So this gets referred to as being an offset in the model. I said, the way I learned to think of it as we're modeling the number of occurrences and we want, to, we want to adjust for the time. But we don't want to include time as its own variable because we don't want its coefficient to be weighted more than it should be or less than it should be. Okay, so you can think of it, we're adjusting for the time and uh, we're forcing that coefficient for it to be one. Okay, so that's the idea of what an offset is. In a separate video, we'll look at um, <coughs> fitting a Poisson regression model to rate data in R, and we'll look at in software how we can include the offset. But that's in concept what an offset is and why we include it. So let's take a look at implementing this in R. Stick around guys, there's more to see and please stay safe.